Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Tim here. And in today's video, we're gonna unpack a little bit about notebook beginners and talking about what it is, how it can work for your studio and also about how it came to be. So I've been teaching for a number of years when I first came up with this idea. And what I was finding was that students who were immediately taught to start reading uh, from lesson one. In other words, they come to their first lesson, you say hi, and then pretty much it's like, okay, here's a book, that note there is C, and here is it on the piano, and that note is held for four counts, let's play some Cs. You wouldn't want my life to get boring, would you? That's not an uncommon first lesson for a piano student, and it's really bad, and it's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> Please don't do that anymore if you're still doing that. It's the way I was taught, it's the way most of us were taught. I still remember some of those first lessons. I think I still have the music. It was um, the John Thompson method, I think, and it was really just not all that much fun. Anyway, what we tend to find with students who take this approach, who we take this approach with in their first lessons is uh, either they don't stick around too long or they get bored very easily or even worse, they miss some of the crucial elements of music learning early on in their lessons, which should be about getting a great sense of rhythm and beat and pulse and meter and be able to sing and chant and recite and copy and improvise. These are the things that should be making up a beginner's first few lessons at the piano. And so that's what I tried to do in creating Notebook Beginners. Basically, Notebook Beginners is a lesson blueprint for creative beginner lessons for students or children age, best, best age between about six to 11 or thereabouts. Now, we also have a Notebook Beginners version for preschoolers too. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. But what the research tells us these days is that music is best taught in a similar way to language. And you don't start learning a language by learning to write or read the language. You learn to copy and imitate. And just like babies do, they listen first, lots of listening, and then they start making sounds, they improvise, they babble, and then eventually they'll start to sing or speak, and then they can improvise their own words, and then they might learn to read, and then eventually they'll learn to write. But it's reading and writing is, is delayed. It's not the first things we expect children to do. And what we find is that when reading is the first thing that happens in a lesson, it really takes the fun out of it. It leads to lack of interest. It's pretty boring for the teacher as well. You know, student comes in, all right, get the method book out and it's always the same method book and it might be the one we've used for 20 years because it's just easy. It doesn't lead to building imagination. It's not creative and you miss some of these aspects of beat and meter and things like that. So what would you do if I took away your method books for the first five to 10 lessons? with a new student. If you're like most teachers, you'd probably freak out a little and hate me forever and want the method book back. <laughs> and so that's why I created this framework because I knew that just uh, suggesting to teachers, well, here's a cool thing to try. Why don't you not try teaching people reading? Just saying that was not going to solve many problems because we need another framework to follow if the framework we've used for years is, is taken away. And so that's why I created this. And it just shows you step by step, everything you need to know and say and do and teach in 10 comprehensive lesson plans that you can use over 10 weeks. But to be honest, what I often find and what I hear from teachers using this, we've had hundreds, almost actually thousands of teachers using this now, they will tend to one lesson in the framework could well last two or three lessons with a student. It really depends on how quickly they pick things up and how fast you want to move. Now, one of the other important factors I realized in providing a no book framework for teachers was that if you don't have any books, what are you going to give kids to do for practice until you see them next week? So one of the things I've really focused on is creating a really structured approach so you can see exactly what tasks you need to assign the child and they'll be able to do it without the book. And don't worry, there's plenty of fun things they can do week to week without having to worry about a book. All right, so let's go through and take a look at an example, one of these lesson plans from the Notebook Beginners Framework. So we're gonna have a look at lesson two. It starts with clear objectives and then things to remember. So um, making sure you remember to practice the accompaniments um, and the singing and echo play exercises so that you're prepared. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but I've had a few of those lessons where I've got a new method book out and suddenly realized, oh, the accompaniments are all in G flat major because the kids are playing on black keys. And actually, I need to just run through this a couple of times if I'm going to play it well. <laughs> have you been in that situation? I definitely have. So then we move on to the main lesson plan. It starts with a get to know you section. I'm sure you're doing that anyway. Uh, and we're going to review the sitting position of the student because in the first lesson, that's one of the important things we cover. We're going to do some improvising on the black keys and, and also an animal improv. This is so fun. It's just packed with imagination and creativity for the students. It's it's really good and it's really quite simple too. Uh, we're going to do some rhythm work, um, some singing and echo playing. We're going to use the frog and snake game. If you haven't checked that out, then definitely look at my other YouTube video, which explains that. It's basically the most simple, fun game if you're in person with a beginner student that you can possibly use. And then we're going to learn a song and we're keep, going to keep a beat. So one of the things that I'm really passionate about is having singing be a really natural part of a music lesson, a normalized part of a music lesson. For piano students, for a long time, that wasn't the case. And when you finally ask kids to sing or sing something back to you or copy you or whatever it was, they would just shrink into a pile on the floor because they didn't want to sing. If you introduce it from the first lesson and normalize it, which we do in this framework, then it just won't be an issue for students later on. And I've found out so many of my students have incredible singing voices by asking them to actually sing and giving them a push and a nudge. It's amazing what you can find out there. And singing is so critical to a real sense of musicality. It helps in so many different areas. So this framework does include um, a fair bit of singing and chanting and reciting and while singing, tapping and keeping beats and things like that. And finally, it finishes with the practice plan and the resources. Now, I've included all the printed scores of the accompaniments. Plus, inside our membership, you can download orchestrated backing tracks for each of the play along improvisations and you can share these freely with your students. So as I said, there's detailed plans for 10 weeks, but it can last a hell of a lot longer if you want to, or you can just pick and choose a few different lessons and jump in and out as, as you wish. You don't have to follow for all the 10 weeks. You could use the first three and then move to a method book. Now, I've got, I should say, I've got nothing against method books. Students need to learn to read eventually, and method books are a really great structured, scaffolded approach to reading. Whichever method you choose, you know, there's obviously pros and cons about different ones. So I'm not against method books. I just don't think they should be used in the first lesson or the first few lessons, preferably. Okay, I wanna share some really cool feedback that we've got from teachers over the years who've been using this. Catherine said, taught a first lesson to a new student yesterday and her mum said, wow, how did you learn to teach piano like this? Is this how you were taught? Because it sure isn't how we were taught as kids. My answer was learning from you, i.e. me, other piano teachers online who have had great ideas for keeping piano fun. A big shout out to Tim Topham for the Notebook Beginners approach. And Susan said, just a note to tell you, thanks for the Notebook Beginner lesson plans. I've used them several times now and really love their flexibility and exploration focused structure. Today was a first lesson for a young student with Asperger's and it was a perfect way to get him started and engaged. He wasn't overwhelmed and didn't feel he had to stick to the exact page in a book. We created music together and explored the keyboard. And I have to show you this feedback from Krista, it's so cute. Um, she said, and I wanted to tell you about the six-year-old student I started using the Notebook Beginner Framework with. It basically saved this student. His mum was ready to drop lessons because what I was using just wasn't working for him. He just absolutely loves the lessons and I love teaching them. We started exploring the Egypt pentatonic scale. This week, I made a passport for him and caught a picture of him wearing a headdress that he'd actually made. How creative and fun is that for a student? So if you think all this sounds like fun and you'd like to try it out with one of your beginner students or just test it out yourself uh, and explore some of the improvisations and creative activities I've created, then you can actually get the first three lessons 
free and watch the first three teaching video links as well. We're gonna have a link in the description and you can just head to topmusic.co slash beginners to get all of the access to that. Even if you've never done anything like this before, I guarantee that you can do it and you will have an absolute ball. And I also guarantee you'll never look back and you'll never open up that method book in the first lesson ever again. Now, the first three free lesson plans that you're able to download at topmusic.co slash beginners is just part of a bigger course. So I've actually created a course with me teaching the framework with video at the piano for all of the 10 weeks worth of lessons. So you can actually see exactly what I do, how I do it, the props I use, the way I teach it. Now, if you wanna grab all of the course, then you'll need to head over to topmusicpro.com and grab our studio membership. Or you can also buy just the Notebook Beginners course as a one-off course, and we'll put a link to that in the description as well. As I mentioned right at the start, we also have a course in our membership for a preschool version of the Notebook Beginners program. So that takes you step-by-step step in exactly the same way through the entire program, but it's all adjusted down to preschool aged students. It's really great and it works with groups. All of this can work with online lessons as well, just needs a little bit of interpretation and um, rejigging sometimes. But all of this, I can guarantee you, will revolutionize the way you approach your beginner piano student lessons and I cannot encourage you to try it out enough. Hey, just before you go, make sure you click here to subscribe and we've got thousands of other videos all on the topic of music education and teaching. So make sure you check out some of those other ones here and I'll see you in the next video.